So this is the video for the top left corner of the Dear Jane quilt and it's going to be worked directly from the book. We've got nine octagons and ten here. This one gets applique on and you want to make sure that you've got the short end on the correct section. So there's a short end and a long end of each octagon. So you'll have to keep an eye on that because it's real easy to get them turned just a little bit. And then we've got little triangles and the squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, put this row together. I'm going to put a row together of the octagons and then I'm going to put my pieces on the outside edge and then on the inside edge and then I'm going to make another row, connect that to this assembly and then put these on individually and then another row of three and on and that way I can attach these relatively easily and I will base them as I'm going to go attach them. And all my pieces are here. When I went to go lay my pieces out, I had missing one piece. So I, this is why I keep my extra fabric. And I took a little index card and traced it from the book and then made a new piece. But don't know what happened to it. Occasionally that happens. My basting, I'm going to baste the small edges first. And then I'm going to go and do the long edges because it gives you more of a sharper edge on each corner rather than have a... A, you know one two like a layered type of thing I just I found I like it better but it's up to you however you want to baste it these I'm going to baste these two first and then this last so my tags go away from the octagon these I'm going to baste this first and these last so that the tags go away from the octagons and these I'm going to do opposite side and then opposite side basting for this these I'm going to baste short sides and then the long sides, same thing here. This is my applique, and this is these I'm going to base these here, and then the other ones. So I'm going to first get started. These are going to be short sides and then long sides as well. First get started by putting one of the row of three octagons together. So I've basted my pieces, and these are my little tiny triangles. And I want to make sure I keep everything in the same uh, the same location so that I can just put them together. I don't want to accidentally mix anything up so I'm going to attach the uh, octagons together first. So I put the octagons together and now I will stick the little triangles into their proper spots. Got the little triangles attached to the bottom of this octagon row. Next thing to do is to baste the little things that go on the top, the triangles on the end and the squares in the center. So I got the squares basted and the end triangles and now I will attach them to where they belong. So I've attached the squares and the outside triangles to the octagon row, so this is what I have. Next I am going to baste and attach these three octagons together before I attach it to the rest of the assembly. So I've got the octagons of the second row assembled and so now I'm going to put it onto the first row section. I've added the second row of octagons. And this is what it is from the front. So the next thing to do would be to baste and add on the next row of little squares and triangles. Squares and the triangles are on this section, so now I've got two rows with all the sections filled in. So the next one I'm going to do is baste and attach these to each other. So I've assembled my third row of octagons, and you, you can put them on these other two if you want to right now, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to attach these little pieces to the top, then I will attach this to here, because I did have some just some bulky handling of this when I was doing these. So I'm going to attach these to the top of this single row before I attach it to the rest of the assembly. I've attached my triangles to the top of this row, so now I'm going to attach this to the rest of the assembly. So I've assembled all three rows of the octagons with their corresponding triangles. So this is what I've got. So now I'm going to look at my chart and 
I've got all these surrounding pieces and I want one that's going to be the length of one side so that would be this one. So I'm going to go ahead and baste and attach that one which is here and then connect it to this and then I can go around and attach the other pieces as well. So I basted and attached this top portion. So this is what we have here. So then I look for another section here. So we're going to go to this side, which is the same thing. It's the length of that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that to this piece right here. So I got this side attached and you want to make sure that you've got the 90 degree angle side touching the center because my tendency was to flip it over but um, that'll give you the wrong angle. So now I've got, oops, <laughs> oops, we'll put that over there. Now I've got this section completed. So the next thing to do is to add this piece here. So I got this. Make sure you, when, I, when you go to add a piece that it's always upside down because that's how you're working. If you flip it over and try to add it here, the angles may not be right. So you just want to make sure that you're always working from the same direction. So I'm going to base these on the short end first and then the long side and then I will get it attached to this edge. So I've basted this little strip piece but there's two different ends. There's an end with an angle and an end that's flat. You want to make sure that you get the flat end down here. So if this is on the back side, you want to make sure that the ed angled edge is up here and the flat edge is down here. I've attached this side slender piece. So then the next thing to do would be attach the bottom slender piece that goes across this whole section. And again, I will base the edges. There's an angle on this end and there's a flat edge on this end, so make sure that when you do baste it that you have the angle on the right side and the uh, flat end and the other correct side. It's real easy to get it turned around. So I'm going to go ahead and baste this and attach it to my assembly. So now this section of the strip is attached and this is what you should have and we're going to work on this corner now. I've got a octagon that's going to need to be appliqued to the tip. So I'm going to baste both of these and then I can work on placement of my octagon. Got both of these pieces basted and so if you look at the octagon the short ends are on the point side and the long sides are on the 45 degree area. So the long sides are going to be facing the edges of this point. So it doesn't really matter which one, it just want, you don't want to do this, you want to do that. And if you look at this, this point is closer to that point. It's not centered on this side, but this is pretty centered. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I want to make sure that this distance is approximately the same as this, and that this is approximately lower on both sides. So I'm going to then be able to staple it at least in two spots. I might staple in four so I make sure that it stays put so I can applique it down. But I want the placement to uh, look just like that. So I got my pieces stapled. I did use four staples to make sure that it stays down. So now I'm going to applique around this and get this stitched down. So I've got my octagon applique down to the point. And now I will attach it to the rest of the assembly. So I've attached my tip to the rest of the assembly and now my top left corner has been completed.